Did you know that it's possible to separate white light into its different component colors such that you end up having this beautiful rainbow of colors ranging from red to orange, indigo and violet? Then yes it is. And this is by the use of a prism. Now this works because each individual color has a different wavelength. Now I know some of you might be wondering, did I click on the wrong video? Why is she discussing dispersion of white light when the lesson is supposed to be on fractional distillation of liquid air? Then no, you're in the right spot. The reason why I'm using this example is because I want you to draw a comparison between this and that. So when we talk about fractional distillation of liquid air, this essentially is a process that separates the different gases that are present in air according to the differences in their boiling points. So this is what you're going to discuss in our lesson today. So hello and welcome. Now let's start. What is air? So air is a mixture of different gases. We have nitrogen, oxygen, carbon four oxide, um, noble gases, the main component of which is argon. We even have water vapor and dust particles. So all of these are different components present in air. Now, when fractional distillation of liquid air is done, the three main components that are usually extracted from air are nitrogen, argon, and oxygen. So that means that we need to come up with a series of steps as such in order to eliminate all the unwanted components. Now, let's dive in. What is the very first step of fractional distillation of liquid air? That is purification. So the air is passed through filters to essentially remove any dust particles in there. Next step, removal of carbon four oxide. This of course is done by passing the air through a concentrated solution of sodium hydroxide. Sodium hydroxide absorbs any carbon four oxide. So that means at this point, we have managed to eliminate dust particles and carbon four oxide. In the third step, we are removing water vapor. And how is this attained? By subjecting the air to very low temperatures of negative 25 degrees Celsius. Now, let's me, let me just uh, take you back to form one, to, you know, term one work of chemistry. Water has a freezing point of zero degrees Celsius. That essentially means that if you have liquid water at zero degrees Celsius, it's going to solidify now, imagine going even further than that to negative 25 degrees Celsius. Any liquid water is simply going to solidify and be removed as ice. At this point, we have managed to remove the three unwanted components and we are remaining with nitrogen, oxygen and argon. Can we proceed to fractional distillation now? Not so fast. So, fractional distillation is a process whereby you're having separation of a mixture based on the boiling point. Boiling point, ladies and gentlemen. So that means that our air needs to be in liquid state. How is this attained? How do we convert gaseous air to liquid air? Simple, by comp repeatedly compressing and expanding it. So repeated uh, compression and expansion at very high pressures of around 200 atmos and at very low temperatures of negative 200 degrees Celsius causes the air to liquefy. So it becomes liquid. And now finally, we can proceed with the last step, which is fractional distillation. Now, fractional distillation, as stated before, involves separation of components of a mixture based on the differences in their boiling points. Now, nitrogen, sorry, the air is passed into a fractionating column as such. Nitrogen, having the lowest boiling point out of these three gases, distills off first. This is followed by argon and lastly by oxygen. And there we have it. Literally, we have it. We are done with this process. Now, I know some of you might be thinking like, seriously? Oh, yes, yes. There's nothing else to add on to that. Now, some students might be hoping that oh, I wish all industrial processes in chemistry were as simple and as easy and as straightforward as this, if only, right? So this brings us to the end of our lesson today. It has been short but sweet. I hope you found it, um, what word am I looking for? Informative. Let's go with that. You found it informative. And if you haven't subscribed up to now, please do so. There's, such, there's so much more amazing content that is coming. See you next time.